Hey guys, I decided to make one last video about uh, the PE3A and external graphics. Um, I'm going to start with the adapter itself and the changes I made and how I use the adapter with the uh, external video card. Um, I wouldn't recommend it doing it this way, but this is the way I got away with it. Uh, it's almost a week since I've used this video card. I've been using it on and off. I haven't used it every single day because I, I do have stuff to do. Um, so we'll start with the adapter itself. Uh, one little review of that. It, uh, it looks like this, right? And the specifications are down here. And you can see it uses Express Card Standard 2. Um, it does have a USB 3 port on it. And what specifically we're interested in here is the power output specification. So you've got 1.3 amps on the 3.3 volt line, and you got 5, uh, 0.9 amps on the 5 volt line, and you got 0.2 amps on the 12 volt line. Uh, bear in mind, all three of these sources, I mean, all three of these sh share the same source. This this adapter is not designed for you to use the PCI Express with the USB at the same time. So don't plug them both in at the same time. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen if you do that. Like I said in an earlier video, this is like an engineering sample. So um, let me just explain. Yeah, so 3.3 volts, 1.3 amps max. That's really um, that that line is really going to be address uh, is going to be part of uh, powering up the video card it's, itself. The 12 volt line I end up cutting, like I showed in this other video, um, and uh, I, I I didn't. It's not like it's permanently disabled. If I did put a piece of solder there, it would reconnect it again. But I'd also have to unscrew it and take it apart because um, it's on this on this thick side thing. Um, another thing another thing I looked at that helped me out considerably was this this diagram right here. This this the colors actually do mean something. Um, they basically tell you like what side of the card the lines are on the, the different colors like red and blue um, some things some things look a little quirky like this corner right here it looks like there's red here and there's red here and you're thinking oh it's connected it's not really connected um, I, I don't understand the color scheme exactly but this is actually connected to this line up here or this line up here is shadow I actually you know I think this line is shadowing it so Anyways, the 12 volt is coming into this pole and then it's going out through here and up to these two pins here. So this is, if you look at the PCI Express uh, bus, that's, that's where the 12 volt lines are coming in at on the PCI Express bus. Um, so cutting it made it so that I could put my own thing there and this other one was the ground. So yeah, this helps. Another thing that helps is if you uh, if you need to look at the other side, you can take a picture of this image and flip it around using some kind of imaging program, and that'll help you decipher what's going on on the other side as well. Uh, another thing that was useful was uh, this these diagrams right here, where it shows you how how they're stepping up the voltage from the source over to the output, and you know the chip number that you're, that they're using is also present there. So it's the same chip but there's two separate chips and they both have this uh, different output. And basically we're not using this one right here. I, this is the one I ended up cutting. So this circuitry is still there but this line doesn't actually connect to anything anymore. <clears throat> so another document that was fairly useful was was uh, this T Texas Instrument had this document on the web uh, right there and it basically shows you the lines from the host to the express card. So what's interesting is this persist line actually tells, you know, whatever um, adapter you're using if the power coming across these lines is good. So if, if, it's, if this is trying to draw too much power, this, this line should tell it that it's trying to do it and the device should shut itself down. Um, you can see they also have another diagram a little bit further showing what what things they're looking at. So um, I'm gonna try and 
focus on that part. So there's a, like a current limit and there's a thermal limit and that information ends up going through to the uh, persist line over there. Uh, so like the power good all or whatever. So they, they explain to you that and you can see how on another diagram how uh, the persist line why it makes it all the way to the bus over here on the back side I think somewhere like towards the end of it. <coughs> so that's how that, that uh, is functioning. Uh, let's go over the power situation since people are probably interested in that. I've got five adapters for, to power this video card. The previous video card, the 5570, I only had one because it didn't have the same requir requirements as you know a Galaxy GTX 460 Razer would. So the wattage requirements it was like somewhere around 40 for the for the HIS you know Silence 5570, and this is like this the wattage requirements for this is like 160. So I had to have more power. Um, so let me explain to you what I've got going on. Uh, I'll start with the, uh, I think it's good to start with the power adapter. So uh, I've got a lot of them under my table here, but really only five of them concern the video card. The blue one is my laptop, and this one belongs to my brother-in-law's little server deal that I'm hosting here. Um, the other ones, this is a 12-volt, 5-amp adapter, and the rest of these four are 12-volt, 2-amp adapters. And uh, so the 12 volt 5 amp adapter is here, and then you've got four 12 volt 2 amp adapters. And if you add up all the wattage, it's 156 watts. Plus, you have the watts coming across the 3.3 lines, which is, I think, four watts or something like that. So you get like 160 watts. So, unless they lied on the advertisement page, it has enough power. <laughs> so, um,. So that's interesting. I'm trying to remember. I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Oh yeah, the on and off switch. Um, so all of these are the 12 volt lines for for this for the for the for the video card. And I'm going to go over the power on procedure that I use in order to get this thing to function without burning itself out. Uh, so we're going to start by uh, shutting my computer off and shutting off the. Uh, the uh, video card, the onboard video card. This particular laptop uh, driver wise does not seem to allow me to have the integrated graphics on at the same time as the external graphics so um, it, it just doesn't work. It'll blue screen on you. You you won't be able to boot up. You gotta disable one or the other. So I'm gonna start by, by uh, disabling the uh, the onboard graphics so I'm going to go to the device manager. Uh, I clicked on the performance manager instead of device manager. I'm going to go to display adapter and I'm going to right click and say disable. And then it's going to tell me disabling this device will, will cause it to stop functioning. Do you really want to disable? Yes. So now I should get, yeah, the display came back, the device is disabled, and I should be able to shut down. So now I'm going to shut down the computer. Um, let me see. It's hard to hold the phone and see what I'm clicking on. <coughs> so now it's shutting down. And now I'm going to show you how I'm going to power it off. Now remember I disabled the onboard display. So, not the onboard display, the, the onboard graphics. The onboard display still works. It's just that it's using the external display right now. Um, so now the computer's off. So the next step is not to turn on the 12 volt adapter, but to actually plug the big thing in. So I'm just going to plug it right in. The computer's off, right? You plug it in. This particular I'm going to have to set down the phone for one second, and I'll show you, I'll show you why after I fix this. Um, uh, The video card is exceptionally heavy. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it's like one piece of metal, you know. So I have to have these like CD jewel cases holding the back side of it up, and I've got like a like a little rubber band like wrapped around it to make sure it doesn't come out of the slot. Um, there's a uh, my uh, my 12 volt adapter is actually using this jack. See, it's a 2.1 millimeter to, and 5. 
uh, five millimeters. Just the dimensions inside and outside of the jack power jack that that uses that I wired up, and uh, in place of the onboard uh, jack or power. I'm sorry. So now the, it's plugged in. You make sure it's snug on the uh, on the adapter, and there's it's lined up and it's you know semi leveled, and you know it's all good there. So then you turn on the computer. Now the 12 volt is still off. So the video card is not going to come on. I'm going to plug the uh, the VGA thing in anyways. Hold on one second. All right. So the, the, the video card is still off, but what's going to happen is the bus is going to get powered up, and the 3.3 lines are going to come up first. So I'm going to do that. It's going to turn on, and it should show. Uh, yeah, so the ThinkPad comes on. Now... There's a couple of key items here. You need to be in a spot where the operating system isn't running. I happen to have, you know, my drive encrypted, so it brings this up. At this point, power is going to this thing, and I can turn it on without it, you know, burning itself out because it has some control over the voltage coming in. So I'm going to turn it on. You see the fan starts pitting, so it's actually on. And then I do the three finger salute to reset it. So now I reset it. And what we should get is the external video card popping up on the display. So there we go. Uh, I think it had mentioned NVIDIA on there somewhere, but I, don't, I, I didn't see it fast enough. So now I'm going to type in my password. I'm going to set the phone down for that for one brief moment. I'm going to set it down next to the fan so you can hear it hopefully. So now it's booting up into Windows. Uh, the other display should still be enabled. Um, the other adapter is enabled. I just disable, enable and disable the one on board. And when you remove the device from the computer, it doesn't look for it. Then, you know, if it's not actually plugged in. So anyway, so it's booting Windows now. Um, I've got a couple issues with my computer. I've got the uh, indexing, the Windows search feature to index the whole, you know, computer and every file on it. So I have a little bit of a boot up issue because it does that and just nails my hard drive for like a minute or two. But uh, here, let me log in and show you what's going on. So the video card's running right now. The fan cut back significantly from its like default speed or whatever that was. And uh, the computer's operational. Um, I'm also going to tell you about Extreme Tune, and I'm also going to go over the shutdown procedure, so you might want to stay tuned. Uh, Extreme Tune is Galaxy's uh, tuner, and I, it's a very, 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 very touchy uh, overclocking tuner monitoring device thingy. Um, I'm going to give you, I couldn't find jack for info on this thing <laughs> and I had problems with I like change the I changed the password and the password that I changed it to it just didn't work and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on I was like so this is the uh, this is the software product I'm talking about and it turns out that this software product only supports numeric passwords so like oh uh, this this whole thing is is related to like uh, using the iPhone Extreme Tune app so you have to have a completely numeric password when you change it from the default password of one two three four five six. Um, if you change it to an alphanumeric password, it won't complain and it'll it'll accept the changes, and you won't know what your password is because it didn't accept the alphabetic characters. <laughs> so I found that out. Uh, digging through the registry and they actually store the password in plain text in the registry in the WoW 64 32-bit section or whatever under Extreme Tune. So it's actually it, somehow my password got set to zero, the, the, the number zero. Um, and you can actually edit the registry and change the password to what you want it to be, but you'll notice that the, the type of the password is going to be numeric. So you can't set it to alphanumeric. I was just saying that. So I'm going to crank this up. Um, my hard drive light's still going off. 
I, I, 